Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to USIP. My name is Michael Yaffe. I'm the vice president here at USIP for the Middle East and Africa programs. And we are delighted to be welcoming you all here for an event that we are co-sponsoring with the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office of the United States and Nadia's initiative. I want to extend a very special and warm welcome to Nobel Prize laureate and founder of Nadia Initiative, Ms. Nadia Murad, who is visiting us here at USIP for the first time. I also want to welcome Representative Stanley Cow, and thank you for your partnership in this initiative and this event today. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to Ambassador Kelly Curry, to Special Advisor Knox Thames, to Special Representative Max Primakoff, Primaroff, Max, ah, there you are, Max, <laughs> and everyone else who has joined us. To those of you who have been to USIP before, welcome back to the Institute. And for those of you new, and this is your first time to the Institute, welcome. And let me briefly introduce who we are. The U.S. Institute of Peace was founded in 1984 as an act of Congress to establish an institution devoted to the prevention, the mitigation, and resolution of violent conflict. We, uh, we, rep we work throughout the world to basically take analysis of conflict and apply it in ways that we can help to resolve conflicts. And we are working throughout the world, in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, in Latin America. And, it, and during this time, one of our most significant programs, or one of our longest programs, deals with Iraq. Uh, we have been in Iraq since 2003, continuously. And we have been dealing with many of the key issues in Iraq including the plight of Iraq's minorities. As I said, we have been working in Iraq on various conflicts to resolve through negotiation and agreements, including those that have been dealing with the issues of the respect for Iraqi minorities. Uh, we have negotiated in areas of Tikrit, in Hawaja, in Talafah, and we are working with, directly with the communities uh, with their leaders, with the civic leaders, with the representatives, and including engagements with the government of Iraq and with the Kurdish regional government. This work, as I said, includes supporting religious minority communities as they recover from the devastation left behind by ISIS. We are working currently in Nineveh province and we're working in many of the towns in those areas. And we have been expanding our dialogues in Iraq, particularly through the Alliance of Iraqi Minorities. We work with partners on the ground. We work with, all, with the minorities to empower minority groups, including Yazidis. We work with the Christians, we work with the Shabaks, we work with all the, all the minority groups in order to empower them so they have a say into their own future, to help them in, uh, resolve internal communal disputes. It has now been over a year and a half since Iraq defeated the military presence of ISIS. And yet many people remain internally displaced. Many Yazidis remain displaced. And other minorities are basically languishing in internally displaced people camps with little prospect of returning home in the near future. Today we are fortunate I'm very pleased to welcome a leading advocate of the Yazidi people, a victims of sexual and gender-based violence, a Nobel Prize laureate, UN Goodwill Ambassador, Ms. Nadia Murad. Ms. Murad was a survivor of the 19, oh, sorry, of the 2014 genocide against the Yazidi people. She will speak about her work with Nadia's initiative, which is dedicated to rebuilding communities in crisis and, effect and advocating globally for victims of violence. Before we hear from Ms. Murat, we will also hear from our co-hosts, the Honorable Stanley Cao, representative of Taiwan to the United States, 
He will be followed by Ambassador Kelly Curie from the State Department, Office of Global Criminal Justice. And then we will hear from Knox Thames, Special Representative for Religious Minorities at the State Department. Ms. Murat will first speak directly to the audience, and then she will present a certificate of appreciation to the government of Taiwan for their contribution to Nadia's initiative. She will then sit down with our director of USIP's Middle East programs, Sarhang Hamasaid, for a moderated discussion. And now a little housekeeping. You should have received cards when you came in for writing down questions, which we will collect for the moderated discussion. If you are tweeting about our conversation today, please use hashtag Nadia Murad USIP in your tweets. So now, please join me in welcoming our event co-host, Representative Cal. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Yaf and Nadia and Ambassador Curry, all distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends. As a proud member of the Global Coalition, my government welcomes the continued significant progress made in liberating territories previously controlled by the ISIS. However, victory in combat is only part of the story. And Taiwan is committed to working with all partners, all partners, the United States, like-minded countries, and international NGOs, and making every effort necessary towards civilization and humanitarian assistance. And speaking of uh, the Global Coalition, General John Allen is currently visiting Taiwan with uh, a policy delegation, and of course, he was the one help organize this global coalition some five years ago. And he couldn't be more excited and proud with this momentous gathering here uh, today at the USIP. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, when elaborating a free and open Indo-Pacific strategy not long ago, and he specifically described Taiwan's role as, and I quote, a democratic success story a reliable partner, and a force for good in the world, and unquote. And we appreciate and believe in its words, because that's what Taiwan, today's Taiwan is about. You know, standing tall and strong, and as an unmistakable and indispensable partner in the world, both bilaterally and multilaterally, to address global and regional challenges freedom of religion, Ebola pandemics, women's empowerment, disaster relief, and humanitarian assistance. And as 2019 also marks the 40th anniversary of Taiwan Relations Act, the rock solid in a cornerstone and a legal framework of relations between our two countries, and also the, an enduring partnership between the United States and the Taiwan and our joint endeavor on this and all those fronts have become an even more significant. So it is the major reason why we gather here today, as we are deeply inspired and touched by Ms. Nadia Muro's courage and his advocacy and for her suffering people. And Taiwan's half million US dollars contribution may be small and small amount, but it shows a much bigger, bigger heart on the part of our government and our citizens. And Taiwan is among the first in a coalition to answer Secretary Pompeo's call for help. So during the February ministerial. And a quick note is that over the past few years, now Taiwan, our government and NGOs have provided over 33 million US dollars in cash and in-kind humanitarian assistance to the displaced refugees and returnees in the region, including hundreds of temporary housing units, a mobile hospital, 
funds and equipment for demining operation. So we still have work cut out and to accomplish our final goal. But please rest assured that Taiwan is more than willing, ready, and available to help. And thank you very much for having me. And if I have the honor to have Ambassador Curry to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stanley, for um, inviting me up. And thank you to USIP and TechRo for asking me to join you today. Um, it, it's such an honor for me to be here to represent the State Department today at this important ceremony, recognizing Taiwan's contribution to Nadia's initiative that will allow it to continue its incredible work on behalf of the Yazidi people and its incredible efforts to help work for a world that's free of genocide and mass atrocities. It, it, this is a, a huge personal and professional honor to be participating in this ceremony and to be here with you all today. Um, when Taiwan first offered to make this contribution to Nadia's initiative, it was at the Defeat ISIS Coalition Foreign Ministers meeting in February of this year. And we're so thrilled to see that this um, donation has come to fruition today. This gift is a testament to the shared values, human rights, and respect for the dignity of all people that underpin our important and enduring friendship with Taiwan. It's really meaningful to be a part of this because when I first met Nadia, it was while I was working with Ambassador Nikki Haley at the U.S. mission to the U.N., where we were fighting to end ISIS's reign of terror in Iraq and Syria, and where we were fighting to get the U.N. to take action on behalf of the Yazidi people. And it's incredible. It's been just amazing to watch how Nadia has taken the, the personal trauma that she has suffered, the, the horrors that she and her community have lived through and turned them into this amazing, amazing initiative and, into, and used her story to, to tell the story of her people in a way that has touched so many of us. Um, it, it is, she's, she's not just a voice for her people now, but for a voice for all people who, who are survivors of atrocities. And she, no one could have been more deserving of the Nobel Prize, and it was, it was thrilling, with, along with so many people who know Nadia and who've seen her grow into this incredible role to see her receive that award. It, it couldn't be a more deserving one for a more deserving person. Um, I, we share a, a common commitment to the idea that when a conflict ends, it's not really over until the healing of the people affected by that conflict begins. And we share the common goal of holding the perpetrators accountable. And that's what my office at the State Department does. I'm currently working in the Office of Global Criminal Justice, what used to be called the War Crimes Office. And the animating idea of our office is about accountability. Accountability for the most serious, grave, gross human rights abuses perpetrated in the world. Genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes, and ethnic cleansing. These are the issues that we work on day to day. And it's very rare that we have someone like Nadia to work with who understands so personally the trauma and the, the, the challenges of dealing and coming to terms with these mass atrocities, but also has the savvy and the skills to actually do the things that need to be done to get out there and advocate for her people in a way that she has done. It's just truly amazing. And we know how important accountability is, and we're not going to stop working for it. And that is a pledge that I continue to make to you and that the department will continue to make. We know why it's important. We know that it shows the survivors and the victims that the international community not only takes what happened to them seriously, but is taking action to make sure that there is justice for them. And we know how important it is to help them rebuild their communities and move on to a brighter future. So at the State Department, we have a really long history of working with the Yazidi community and other religious and ethnic minorities in the Middle East. We've publicly acknowledged that ISIS is responsible for genocide against the Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims in areas it controlled, and crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing against those groups, and in some cases, against Sunni Muslims, Kurds, and other minorities. 
This year, we've provided $2 million to the UN investigative team for accountability of Daesh, UNITAD, created by the Security Council in 2017 to collect, store, and preserve evidence of ISIS atrocities that may amount to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. Our contribution to UNITAD helped, to be, helped it to begin its exhumation of mass graves in Sinjar, and that is that uh, an event that was incredibly important for the Yazidi people, and we're so pleased to have been able to support that and what it represents to your community. Last year, Congress also appropriated $5 million to our office to support grants to be awarded in an open and competitive process to promote accountability in Iraq and Syria. And we're working really hard to get those um, funds out to NGOs and other organizations that can help build the important evidentiary cases and help the healing to move forward in these communities. The United States has also provided millions of dollars to vulnerable communities in Iraq for infrastructure repair, the restoration of services and livelihoods, and psychosocial assistance to the victims of ISIS to help them begin this difficult work of rebuilding their lives. TechRow's contribution today helps to continue this effort, and we're so pleased to be able to join in them today in marking this important gift. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague, my very good colleague, and our next speaker, Knox Thames, who's the, sp uh, the special advisor for religious minorities in the Office of International Religious Freedom. Thank you so much. Well, it's a great honor to be here this morning. I'm gonna thank USIP and TechRow for organizing this important event. I also want to thank Ambassador Curry, who's a great advocate and ally in the State Department as we work together to promote justice and accountability around the world, including in Iraq, where the genocide that ISIS perpetrator has left deep scars and, and will need a long time to heal. As was mentioned, I serve as the Special Advisor for Religious Minorities in the State Department. Uh, we believe that all people, regardless of religion, including religious minorities, should be able to practice their beliefs freely and peacefully without fear of violence or retribution. No one, no one should suffer violence because of his or her religious or ethnic identity. Unfortunately, this is exactly what happened in 2014 when ISIS swept into northern Iraq and targeted Yazidis and other religious and ethnic minorities. ISIS killed or captured thousands of Yazidis and displaced hundreds of thousands more, many of whom re remain displaced today. During my multiple visits to Iraq and to the region, I've seen the vibrancy of these religious minority communities that have existed there for millennia, but have also seen that they, li that they live a precarious and fragile existence. This spring witnessed two very uh, encouraging events in northern Iraq, the marking of the Yazidi New Year and Easter. The Yazidis were able to celebrate and the Christians were able to gather and we saw heartwarming and encouraging stories about communities becoming revitalized. But while ISIS has been removed, the crisis is not over. The crisis is not over for Yazidis as long as thousands of Yazidi women and children remain missing, either enslaved or murdered. I have met with the Baba Sheikh, the Yazidi spiritual leader, and with survivors like Nadia and family members who are still looking for loved ones. And we are committed to working with the Yazidi people to find these people and to see them return to their families. The crisis is not over for minorities if ISIS members are not held accountable. Justice means more than perpetrators being tried for terrorism against the Iraqi state. It means, where possible, convicting ISIS members for their crimes against individual minorities, the torture, kidnapping, rape, enslavement, or murder. The crisis is not over if the human rights for religious minorities in Iraq is not respected in law and policy and by all members of society. And the crisis will not be over if people cannot go home. We've received encouraging reports about attendance at Easter masses exceeding pre-ISIS numbers at major cathedrals. I also have personally visited Yazidi temples when they've been reopened at just by the hands of the Yazidi community coming together to rebuild and restructure their places of worship. We've also launched two programs where we've sent the Smithsonian Institution to help train Yazidis, Christians, and other minorities about steps they can take to preserve their religious culture. However, for displaced civilians, including many Yazidis, Christians, and others, the simple act of returning home has yet to take place 
because of the physical and economic insecurity in liberated areas. Now, we're very encouraged by the opening of key roads in northern Iraq, but we want to see more. And I want to highlight that the personal commitment of the Vice President to this has been transformative and also highlight the great work of my colleague Max Primerak, who's been sent out to northern Iraq to lead that effort. And so uh, Max is an example of the U.S. government's commitment to remain diplomatically and programmatically to help recreate conditions where religious minorities feel like they have a future in their ancestral homelands. We cannot do this alone, which is why we're so grateful par for partners like Taiwan uh, and others for supporting the important work of groups like Nadia's initiative, which is making a tangible impact on the ground. Here in Washington, we're also working multilaterally to advance religious freedom around the world. Last year, Secretary Pompeo convened the first ever ministerial to advance religious freedom bringing together more than 80 governments and hundreds of members of civil society and religious communities. We will host a second ministerial in three weeks, and we hope to continue making strides towards a world in which all people, including religious minorities, are free to follow the dictates of their conscience. Nadia will again be a speaker uh, at the ministerial, but now it's my great pleasure to introduce her to you all so we can all um, uh, hear her share. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege to always be around Nadia, uh, she is a great example of someone who turned unimaginable pain into hope and action. Nadia is a world-renowned human rights activist and advocate for survivors of genocide and sexual violence. Last year, she became the first Iraqi ever to win the Nobel Peace Prize. She has raised her voice around the world, including at the United Nations Security Council, and in 2016 became the first ever UN Goodwill Ambassador for the Dignity of Survivors of Human Trafficking. Most importantly, and I think you'll see this when you hear from her, she is a woman of great and deep character with a passion for helping those in need. Her courage is an inspiration to myself and will be for all of us. So without further ado, please welcome Nadia Murad. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here uh, with everyone. I'm appreciative of all the efforts of everyone here that has been supporting the Yazidi cause. Um, and I'm happy to talk about these issues today here. Uh, um, these are important issues uh, of existential for the minorities in Iraq and in that region that uh, need to be discussed. There is support for minorities, but uh, further support is needed to make sure that minorities remain in that region. Uh, uh, like uh, Knox mentioned uh, just now, no one should uh, be targeted because of their faith, because of their religion, or, or because they're a woman. And that's what exactly what happened. Uh, uh, but this is ongoing because uh, minorities like Yazidis and Christians and others in that region are facing uh, many challenges uh, and are slowly disappearing from that region. And this is something that uh, we need to work on. <laughs> Uh, 
چند سال از وی کاری کم هر جارا کس شما با عائل خودیم پرسش میکنن که هر دو زاروید برای من جن برای من هتان هال کی دری دینا نهش معلومات هاتی نکشتن کنگی امی بینن و بیشیرن بس سربان معانات هم میدم تحدیت کن که ام بمینه. Many families of the Yazidi community are still facing what happened to them in 2014, including my own family, for example. Um, I have two nephews uh, that are still missing in captivity somewhere, uh, my sister-in-law, and nine of my brothers who uh, were killed by ISIS, we still don't know uh, when we will recover their bodies and, and uh, bury them. But I would like to say that 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 I uh, but still, uh, despite all this, we fight as a community. Uh, our community is uh, uh, resilient, and we have been fighting to um, uh, face these challenges and uh, help our community recover from this genocide. <laughs> از گل که ممنونم اش حکومت تایوان که دعما خو خواجگرش دحیار روش بی ملتی روش بی اقلیت گل مم. Again, I'm happy to be here. We will discuss some of these issues on the panel in a minute, but I would like to thank the government of Taiwan for their support to the Zidi community. Yes, تخلص. امی مگه امی بیشتر قلا کار کنن بدری باز از کیفم اینو ام ایگرام ترجم کن. Yeah, we will talk about these issues, but at the moment, I guess Nadia will hand out a certificate to Ambassador Kao if you can please go on the stage. Uh, good morning again. Uh, my name is Sarang Hamasaid. I'm the middle, uh, director of Middle East uh, programs here at USIP, and I'm going to be. Uh, I have the honor of moderating uh, this session. Um, dear Nadia, it is really, really an honor for me to be here on stage with you. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm here with uh, mixed feelings. Uh, one side of me is here with the feeling of great pain that we are here to talk about. Uh, recovery from genocide, uh, heinous crimes that continue to happen. Uh, I remember my grandparents telling me about these kind of horrible crimes that happened. I remember them happening in 1988, perpetrated by the government of Iraq under Saddam Hussein and the Ba'ath Party, um, only a few years before you were even born. And I saw them continue, uh, ma continue mass murder uh, at the camp Spiker and then uh, 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 genocide against the uh, SDs and the uh, Christians uh, in 2014 perpetrated by ISIS. And unfortunately, uh, the, the mindset of and the conditions for genocide uh, continue. On a positive note, uh, I have a lot of, I have a great feeling of hope admiration and respect for you and survivors of genocide because your story is a story of human resilience at its finest. So thank you for what you do. Uh, before I start uh, my questions, um, I wanted to probably note, you may have realized that I were, used the word Yazidi, not Yazidi. 
And probably one takeaway for you is that actually Yazidi is not the correct name of this community. And one takeaway is if we can start by trying to change and call them how they call themselves. So you will not hear the word Yazidi from me. Uh, if it slips, uh, I apologize, but ISD is how they call themselves. So, Nadia, uh, I mean, you've uh, uh, um, uh, alluded to, uh, to this, uh, but can you tell us a little bit more in your own words um, what Nadia's initiatives uh, seek to accomplish and what challenges you face and the, uh, the SD people face as they try to recover from the heinous crimes of ISIS? Tashtihaka waka nahili is diuka karima kanadia initiativeuka akaliat hamu khasan shingal el vimaha hashta webna pen sal pshti da ish hadi u pshti of genocide hadia grin aikad waka itshti hari mester el barbi khalki kavagar nasar hayataka pshti da ish namail mantake تشتكي ماستر وضع أمني بو أبي هكا إيش روجا بريدة ملي شغلنا بحق بمجتمع دولي راب حكومات داخلية را العراق وكردستان كوضع أمني شبه بي إجبار خلق حتى الكم بعده خو بيتر تبينن آمن تر إيش الشنغالي. First of all, the crimes that uh, the Yazidi community and, and others faced um, in August, it will be f uh, five years. And uh, these communities are still, most of them are uh, displaced uh, and facing challenges to return home. And one of the main challenge, one of, uh, one of the main challenges is the security situation. And we have worked tirelessly with the Iraqi government and the Kurdish government to resolve some of these uh, security issues so that people can feel safe uh, to return home again. بس غيري ويا كيجي إيش بداية وقت داعش ده هادي جالك يزديش جاوا عن درناكتن خاصة عالية شمال وجاب خوا درناكتن بشتي هنگي مانو حتى روجا إي روجي درناكتنو نزيكا بويا هشتي هزاري إزدي إيوا قرية نشنغالي أو خالكيت بيني إنو وادع أمني شوان رباش نبوش وي هشتي هزاري رم جالك ما كار كيركا أو خالكيت تحديات كرين روجا بريدة شر داعش كرين بنا وكب حكومة العراق رب شلوبين بنا الرسمي كقوات كرسمي كاربن المنطقة ده بيتر بمينن وبيتر دفاع منطقة بكن بس أو خلك كم با نابينن هتان هو خدمات تركيز مجتمع دولي يا حكومة السروي هشتي هزاري شوي كيف قرين وكا زيد ترناب um, uh, to remember that many Yazidis did not uh, leave Sinjar, even when ISIS attacked, they uh, uh, fled to Mount Sinjar and they stayed there. Many of them uh, fought ISIS in 2014 and 15. Uh, when uh, the areas were liberated, uh, other Yazidis joined them and returned home. Um, right now, around 80,000 Yazidis have returned home. And when those uh, that have remained in the camps see that uh, these Yazidis that have returned and remained there have not received the support they need. They do not feel that they can return home. Um, some of the challenges they're facing, uh, for example, for, uh, those Yazidis that have returned, as we mentioned, is the security situation. Um, once um, some of these issues are resolved for those who have already returned, others will feel safe uh, to go and join them and return to their homeland. So. Um you sort of um, uh, went to the second question that I was going to ask you. I mean, you've um, uh, mentioned, I think, in a prior uh, publication that about 350,000 uh, ISDs remain displaced. And for those who do not know, that's the vast majority of the community. Uh, so that is an important uh, uh, thing to, to consider. Um, so to get to uh, voluntary, safe, and sustainable return where people can go home and stay there. Um, you mentioned a number of barriers, securities and the attention. Um, who do you think should address this? Uh, uh, where do you see some of this? That, uh, is it the international community? Is it the government of Iraq? Is it the Kurdistan regional government? Who do you think should address those problems? Um. 
البري بيكي وقف افسي سدو بين جهزاري إيه الكامبادا إيه ما وكم مكارك كا السرشن قال كشروف خلق بقري وقت بدايم دست في كاري كري مزاني آلي عدالتي ووقت كيبا هداته إيه كاري بي بقهي عدالتي آلي إيه بلكي الروش كيو دوا واندا إيه آواكرين همو چه بي ووقت با بس مبهورنا كير بقهي بين سالا وانو سرا انو دس عداش مال دورشن قال او خلق همو إيه بمين الكامبا داتا بين سالا um, uh, when we started this work um, and, and, and advocated for the Yazidi community and other communities in Iraq, I knew uh, that uh, the legal side will take some time. Uh, it takes time to uh, bring perpetrators to uh, justice. Uh, also, on the reconstruction side, we knew that it will take some time, but I never uh, thought that it will take uh, more than five years for those Yazidis that are in IDP camps, whom are about two hours away from their home, uh, will not be able to return home. Ibrahim, I work with big carry magriuka carry a a mobadira matkal el el sar arde. Vagarya khalke hella a mushkle dwe dere na a na mabtini chebe aliya mujtamai dwali lazim chebe tishte imham dere aliya. اهردو حكومة دا محلي و اقليم اف بيتير ايش ايش سي سالا و كوابوس دسال كمنطقة حرورية ام قالك هاريت كن كب حكومة دا عراق و كردستان را انو قايمة قايم بها دانين كاف تشتكا بور حلت بي بس قايمة قايم بها دانين جو حكومة دا محلي بشوي دريج بار قالك منظماتو كم مدبين بيركار بكنو بجني هرن ور بشغلن كم تشنج بر حكومة محلينا وافتش وقت بر بهر دو حكومة ركهاتان هو دانانينا. The work that Nadia's initiative does, we our goal was to shift focus to Sinjar and these areas to the ancestral homeland of the Yazidis. So what we did is we worked with both governments, the Iraqi government, the Kurdish government, for example. Uh, for the past two years, uh, and some parts of, of the Yazidi uh, homeland in Sinjar have been liberated more than uh, two years. Uh, but so far, we have not been able to manage, for example, to uh, establish a local government for Sinjar. And when we talk to many of the NGOs, they are facing challenges because there is no local government in Sinjar. Um, and the, the issue of security and local government combined um, it prevents uh, real change in Sinjar and reconstruction of the Yazidi homeland. But at the same time, when we talk about the Shungal Nahat, we have a problem with the Shungal Nahat, and we have a problem with it. ابن نفس الوقت الكامباج خلق ما ني آمنه خلق كي حياته كم وقت تعيشه هتانها تقريبا سد بيا نودو بينش هزار إب طريقة إب سحمات وهتا دركتي نش كامباوان وقشتنا أوروبا وان تعليم الودرة تشتكي مؤقته على جو أواها كت بهم وسرا لي مؤقته كم جي ملاتي ما بحياتي اللي بزحمتت كن انه المستقبل ده اف ملت وجيلي دنود راد بن ويبيا جيلا كي نايخوان ده بان نكاري دورا في في اقليات بريفا با We talk about the uh, security and the lack of services in Sinjar prevent people from returning home but at the same time um, in these camps, in these IDP camps you see they are facing many challenges including uh, lack of access to proper education uh, health services um, and then um, at the same time, about 95,000 Yazidis have already uh, immigrated from Iraq since 2014. This community will slowly disappear from the region no matter what. And uh, um, a whole generation uh, will grow up without uh, proper education, without proper services available to them. Thank you. I have a broader question that I'll uh, get back to uh, later, but uh, a couple of specific questions from the audience that um, uh, came. Uh, one you already uh, answered in your remarks, but um, two related questions. One is, says, um, what is the role of the United States, uh, the uh, Iraqi government, and the KRG in returning the women uh, who, dis who were taken by ISIS? Uh, um, 
I'm Galeke Shovoli Nephakumata Ver Wan Rama Wokam Malumatno Dani Kahana Gortitat in Kachantat and Awaiting it Bijan away Dil Kedrewan in a brassy tan who have a pain salam of Adiraka, a bash in a buka, a resmi, a kawan kachkawan, been a halaskar and awaiting a halaskar no abho awed bin. بس بيت هالية بشتي موصلوا أو حررينوا عراق كامل وسوريا ما معلومات هبون إنه جلق زاروا أو ما ينهج العراق اللي بعائلة واندا ما رسمي كتاب قدم عند حكومة عراق كأم فريقك يزدي أو بنا فالنتير كتشن بقرين بس تحوجي يرخص نجبا حكومة عراق شنا كمبا هول الموصل الكمبا وان بقرين و یک عرب نوان ببین نجبر گلگجی زار رو بون وقت داعش هاتی و خوش بیرا کردن حتی آنها جیم آو رخص نانش با اج با حکومت که ک آو فریق بیاد چه کرد؟ We have worked with our partners, including the U.S., provided information trying to since the beginning of this crisis to help rescue some of the women in captivity. But to be honest. Um, there has uh, not been any real initiative to rescue Yazidi women from captivity from any side. Uh, for example, for the uh, recently after, even after Mosul and Talfar and these areas were liberated, uh, we know for sure that there are uh, some Yazidi children still uh, with some of the families in Talfar and Mosul. Uh, we um, sent uh, 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 papers to the Iraqi government asking them officially to um, let us uh, uh, appoint uh, some Yazidi volunteers to go and look for these children in coordination with the Iraqi government, and not only in Iraq, but uh, in, on the Syrian side and at, at a whole camp. Uh, but so far, uh, we have not gotten uh, the permission from the government, uh, and these volunteers are not able without permission to go and look at, in the camp and these houses and look for these children. Uh, so this is one of the issues that have not been resolved. Uh, thank you. Another question that I have uh, from the audience is, um, says, uh, what do you think is the best way to hold uh, former ISIS fighters accountable um, uh, for those who are from European countries? Um, اب آلمانی را، اب فرانسه را، اب اب یوکای را، اب گلک اجراش بربان داعش چه چونه وید ریو اب داعش را بوینو وقتی که هواگرین ویچلو بی یا جنجی جنیت هکش اروپا وان چون ام گلک ال کیسه کش وان ال آلمانی چغلن اینو محامی خورا با عمل کلونی وان رن هنیزیک بیا که جنگ شود در واقع قدیا کامل آلمانی حتی علی ادایش و جنایی هر دو که اینو آفروش که که وگریان تعداد ازدیابی کردن ام ببینن محکم بین محکم کردن و خاصت جلگه چکو جن و او افادت خبال کنن علنی جدابن بس داین او افادت وان هی نکه او داعش و او جن تعدادی کردن جلگ جد اور پیون نی نفل کرنش عقاب uh, so we've been working with some of the European countries, specifically Germany, France, and, and UK, um, about this specific issue of ISIS fighters uh, uh, that uh, committed crimes against Yazidis and others, um, and including some of the women that joined ISIS in Iraq. A specific case that we are currently working on with our lawyer Amal Clooney in Germany against an uh, ISIS wife and uh, her husband that killed a Yazidi child. Um, but uh, the, the hope of the Yazidi community is that uh, they will see these ISIS fighters in, in court and uh, they're ready to testify, as some of them have already testified, and they're ready to testify again uh, against these ISIS fighters. Um, thank you. So if I um, take you to the broader question, I mean, even before ISIS, the SD community has been reporting grievances related to lack of services for the longest time. I remember one single issue that kept coming up again, that there is a need for a hospital in Sinjar. Uh, and there was other grievances about uh, political representation, that some bigger 
parties and actors uh, were, were hijacking their plight and their, their issues. So obviously recovery from ISIS is not enough because even before ISIS there were challenges. So can you speak a little more about the aspiration of the, uh, the ISD community, not just as a recovery from ISIS, but in an Iraq, in a country um, to, to live with dignity? Can you speak about that a little bit? بلدي هزارو چهار دوا که مش برز الگونده که بوم مش آلی سیاسه وان فهمنا اتگر قانچ یعنی که چه لونه که کی لازم الحکومه دوانده بی بس دشته مزانی انو ما الشنگال هم ویده مستشفق هبو ام چه ایش ها بایا ها که چه لوبا میتونه وی مستشفه علا جد گله گید گیم هبون یعنی قال لك يا بزح ما تبوش علي على جبا إنه أو أقلية همو السر مستشفى كأو جنات تمام بيش علي عملياتها بوي خدماتها همو عبا بنفس الوقت كخالق شلون متعايشين أم بخوب خود عايشين نب علي دعم حكومي مدرسة قال لك يتكلم بون الجندا والداخل جدا أفتش بريد هزاروس سس وبشتي ده هزاروس سس الجندي ما هم ويدا وكا يا المنطقة ما عليج با ما هم منادي وكا الروش كي بنادي شخص البرلمان ده دي مل شنقال هم ويدا شخص هك بنيادي دوبون عليه تقال قال حكومة واندا بيني نبون حتى بوقت بروش بروش مسؤولة عدنا شنقال مع انو شنقال ارد ايز دي عايا وتشتي تشهد بون بيهترش ما تعطى برين كا نمس ترسر منطقة خواتك um, in 2014, prior to um, ISIS attacking uh, our areas, of course, I lived in a small village. I did not know much about politics. I didn't know that you see these, uh, their, their representation in the government and uh, on these issues, but I knew for sure that um, after I learned uh, about some of these issues, um, in terms of the hospital, um, there was only one hospital, small one in Sinjar, uh, that covered the whole region for Yazidis and others that were there. Um, adequate services were not available. Those who needed uh, uh, special uh, uh, treatments, they had to travel to other uh, regions. And it, it was only uh, one hospital that was later actually destroyed by ISIS at the moment. Um, um, education, lack of education, adequate education for Yazidis was also an issue, especially in the villages. Uh, these remote villages um, uh, before 2003 and after that, after uh, the fall of, of the regime of Saddam. Um, the representation in the parliament, um, I know that Yazidis have not been, um, uh, been politically marginalized actually in terms of representation in, the, in their own areas, even in Sinjar prior to 2014. Um, we saw that uh, more and more it was uh, uh, getting taken away from Yazidis and others were coming to represent Yazidis. Uh, uh, well, to connect that with the, the issue of the mayor at the moment, Yazidis are not able to appoint their own mayor in Syria at the moment since 2014 and, and since the liberation from ISIS, they have not been able to uh, resolve the issue of, of just the local mayor. Uh, So if I may actually follow uh, up on that local level of issues um, one, and, and tie it to security. Uh, security today, I mean, obviously uh, the Iraqi society uh, militarized in response to, uh, to the, the conflict with ISIS. So many communities either expanded any armed groups they had or they formed their own. So if you look at uh, the SD community, there are different uh, groups in, in Sinjar and other places uh, that have uh, people have joined those groups. Um, for security to improve from the perspective of the people of Sinjar and the SD community, um, how how can security be provided where the SD people will feel safe on their homeland? Yeah. Uh, از بخوا وقت درکش عراقی یعنی سادی سادی آمین نبینم گله منطقه جی حتی وگر راین مشکلی دوام نیاسی هاینا ات حمایت کردنی وان باشنگال بیتر هاتا اهمال کردنش عالیه از زوح لکه سیاسی تی دا بیاب دیتن مگله جارا 
مو جالك كريا جالك حكومة جي كبيجنا حكومة العراق و كردستان جي علي خلق كاربي اويد في حتى اد فاجرياي انو ببنا شكلك حكومة كرسمي جانا كاربن اد مجبور ان ايرو سلاحا هلجرن وقت نبو سلاحا هلجرن و البرمق بارد خو بسكن انش اش اجر اش هناك جريمة دي وان هاستيا وان داكن هكت جيش نبي يا فريق كامل حكومات حماية وان مقابرة لكن أكيد ويتشن المجبور من البرها ستدخل بسكن غير ويكي ما قلت ما قالك جارة قلت يا حكومات عراق والرسمي ما قدم عندي ورقة ومبخودة همو آلية حكومات عراق وكردستان إنه أف خلقي بقريا شنقال نبس إيز دي جبتني إيز دي وبسلمان كالشيعة والسنة هجت عدالي هات يكرن بيك ربنا قوة كالرسمي ببنا أجيش كاربن الور بساكنن إيش خبر أمني تشيبي um, there are security challenges all over Iraq, not just in Sinjar, uh, but Sinjar in particular, um, uh, the challenges are, are bigger because uh, it has been neglected to, um, uh, by the Iraqi and the Kurdish government to find out a solution between the two sides. And uh, as a result, Yazidis have no choice but to join these uh, armed groups. Uh, for example, uh, guarding those mass graves has been done by Yazidi uh, people who uh, stayed there um, after ISIS attacked and fought ISIS for uh, many years. Uh, we have uh, officially asked the Iraqi government to recruit Yazidis, not just Yazidis, but uh, Muslim Christians, whoever has returned to Sinjar, whoever was there and fought ISIS for years, uh, to recruit them into the official Iraqi security forces so that they can uh, leave these militias and uh, they can take up the security of their own areas, but uh, that has not happened yet. Thank you. I have a question um, from the audience. Um, it says, uh, can you tell us about how the decision was made to allow women survivors of ISIS sexual slavery um, uh, to, br to, to go home, uh, to bring home uh, their children born of sexual violence? And a follow-up question uh, is that how are uh, these children being uh, treated? Yes. Uh, I mean, the, 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 just to give you a little bit of context, that the question doesn't say. The, I, the, the, there was a time where the uh, the SD community had a problem of okay, how to deal with those children who were born as a result of the heinous uh, crimes that ISIS perpetrated. Uh, the community had a problem about okay, how do you deal with it? So, can you tell us? about that internal discussion of the community and how are these children being treated today? Uh, 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 و ما کار کردش روزه برای دژی بشتی از دیوگا که چو جنوت خوا استقبال کردن که اینو و که هم مجنی دیت رو آب بس اف مشکل زار وای را که مازن بو و که بزحمت بو نش علی از دیاب تنی باش علی حکومت عراقی و اجبار حکومت عراقی الالیه تسجیل وان زار و السر علی ابابین حتی کباب داعش به لازم ات بسلمان بن ونف ملاتي مدى وكا بزحماتي تزار وكي إيش إيش بير بابي وداعش بيوزان وداعش وكا أو جريمة وكرينا صرنا بي ويبيا أسجلاندن أم قالك كارت كن ملاتي ما جرا بعائلة إذا حيوان را بس وكا زديم بيجم كأس إنه أفتش تصير لازم أصير آلیه حکومت عراق حلب به ول آلیه دولی و آلیه بلکی ملت مجرا. Yeah, so this is something new uh, to the Yazidi community. Um, uh, a small religious minority with, um, uh, you know, traditions of thousands of years. Uh, this was a challenge, of course, uh, but the Yazidis, uh, the spiritual leaders of the Yazidi community. Um, uh, welcomed all the Yazidi women that were enslaved by ISIS, all the children, uh, 
and welcome them back. Uh, this, there has been a discussion about uh, children born of rape, of course, but this is not just a Yazidi issue, it's also from the Iraqi government side where these children, uh, even if, if the father is ISIS, has to be registered as a Muslim uh, uh, by the, the father, not the mother. And it's very difficult for Yazidi families to have these children be registered at, as Muslims uh, in their households. This is something we have been working with the religious uh, leaders in the community to figure out this issue. But at the same time, this is not only a responsibility on the Yazidi community, this is a responsibility of the Iraqi government and the international community. These children that have uh, been born of rape uh, from ISIS. Um, uh, Yazidis are not able to take care of their own children in these camps. Uh, so how can you expect this community to be able to take care of the children that are born of rape? Thank you. Uh, I have another question from the audience. It says, are you in favor of establishing uh, uh, a, a separate uh, criminal court to deal with the crimes of ISIS? ام علی ایوی کی چغلن خاستن بشتی فریق ای یونتا دز پی کریو او بشتی به هزار دحیا افادویت خداین کا محکمہ کا خاص بی چکرن کا دولین او غیر وے کی جو کا افدا عشید ہا کا گلا کا جو خسل ماندو گلا جن ہل حبسیت کردستان و عراق و اندد کردینا اب هزار بلکی گله کشوان اوید حق تعدل مگرین اوید شنو زارو برین اوید مقابر چکرین که بیا محکمه بیا چکرن سروان خاص ابوان بیا کرد yes so after the UN team was established the UNITA team collecting the evidence of these mass graves and the crimes against the Yazidi community and other communities in Iraq uh, our hope is, that, and we have been working on this uh, with them to try and figure out if we can establish uh, a special court uh, t for these ISIS members to be tried. Uh, we know there are thousands uh, held by the Iraqi and the Kurdish government, uh, some of whom uh, committed crimes against Yazidi women, and uh, Yazidi, uh, they committed crimes against Yazidi women and, and the Yazidi community. Uh, so uh, we would like to uh, see that happen and, and have them tried for these specific crimes against AZD. Thank you. We are coming, we are approaching the end of um, uh, our time and I have um, two uh, uh, other questions that I wanted to ask. I mean, you've uh, previously expressed that the, your greatest um, fear is that uh, if the international community fails to act, that uh, your community, the SD community, will cease to exist as a community. Um, and from, I mean, we've talked about different threads of, uh, uh, of action, but from your meetings, you go and meet with the leaders uh, of, of different countries, different important institutions. Do you feel that the international community is doing enough uh, to help prevent that outcome of, for, for the Yazidi community, SD community to cease to exist? And what more can they do to prevent that outcome? اشروجا بری دو که آوتر سام بو اینو ام وندابن و حتی آنها جیگل اکتر سامش و هج بر وقتی که دیریش بری جو بگر را و ام خالک خوابینن بگری مکاری که جیگل که مزن که رو ده جارا از الحکومت آو دولت آدی سا بگری ای مکاز و رساله بد می آوتش تی عاجلی بگرند جو اف خالق نه و انداکرین اش هنک عالی باش تنی ایباش ها تکرین که برای حکومت آفریقا، آمریکا و فرانسه مکاری بودم عبور راکن عبوج تهری خطر بودن سر منطقه پشتی ای هادا حرران دن و که جالکی خطر بوش خالکی را، آو تشت هادا چه کردنو جالکی باش بو فریق مقابره ای هک هادی چه کردن انو هتان هوا هفته و نه مقبره جماعی هادی ندیدن. که آو مغبره بینا اتوتیق کردن هنر خدوت اد باش هاد نچه کردن وقت برن هتا هاد نچه کردن بس تشتنی مزنتر لازم نه مجتمعی دولی بتنیجی شال عراق و کردستان و کبیا کردن انو اف اقلیات و اندانه بین. Yeah, so uh, yes, this this has been my fear that uh, since uh, first day that. We fear that our community will disappear um, from that region or from our ancestral homeland. And uh, uh, 
um, there has been uh, some uh, po positive uh, outcomes and some pro uh, progress that we have made with our partners. Uh, for example, we have worked on demining uh, Yazidi areas uh, uh, with the support of the U.S. government and the French government, uh, and also uh, support of uh, the U.S. government, the British, and others to establish the UNITAD team uh, to collect the evidence of these mass graves in Iraq. And these, has very, these are very important and positive steps, but at the same time, um, it has been five years already, and if this takes longer and longer, the Yazidi community will uh, disappear from that region. And this is not only uh, the responsibility of the international community, it's also the responsibility of the Iraqi and the Kurdish government to work with the international community to make sure that um, uh, religious minorities, Yazidis and Christians, are able to return to their homes. So you sort of answered uh, another question that I was going to ask, but uh, to give you, to expand a little bit on this, uh, with the um, uh, ministerial coming up uh, in mid-July, and uh, Knox uh, uh, mentioned that, um, what would you like to bring to their attention, not only from the perspective um, of the SD community and the religious minorities in Iraq more broadly, but also in your role as a UN uh, goodwill ambassador? تشتي ايه ايه بيتير ما سالا دي جقال كير بس فيزا انو بيج هيكر انو خطوان انزو بينا او كرين انو حلق باكرين اف اقليات بمينن داعش هدفك ويهبو انو اف اقليات نمينن او هدف وبين سالا وي نيزيكي هدف خود بن وكا امني من في سالم بغنا حلاكي كا وكا بين سال درباس نبن او خال بغرنا منطقه خو حمايه جربيه تشكرن خدمات بين او كرن نديم ام ببين ريت ات خطر استخدامت كن كبس بمين كاس خو بس بحمين اش عباده وفرمانا أقليات أو تعدل يتأكرن وكأزدياو مسيحيا وإديتر وبنفس الوقت أو إن أو يتحك معاناتها بشتهن جيد بينوت هاجرنو ونداد. Yeah, so we spoke uh, at the ministry last year and there were some good discussions, but um, this year I hope uh, to see some results that we take some urgent steps to protect these religious minorities in Iraq. Uh, because uh, uh, they, uh, these minorities are disappearing from that region and if we do not act quickly and swiftly, um, this is going to be an issue and the, these minorities will not be able to return to their homes. Uh, my hope is that uh, we can work on steps uh, including uh, helping these minorities to return to their homeland, uh, to provide uh, protection and services for them so that they're able to live uh, with dignity and, and safety. Uh, these minorities have suffered uh, genocide and they've suffered hardship, uh, but they're the ones that uh, are facing, still facing hardship after uh, the liberation of these areas. After uh, ISIS was defeated, they are still suffering, and this is something that we need to do. Well, thank you. We're coming up, uh, we've come up to the end of our time and we uh, ran a little bit uh, over, and I know that there are other questions from the audience. Uh, I'm, uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap it up here, but I'm pleased to report that uh, Nadia has kindly agreed that she will come back to USIP and we will have, we'll go deeper on some of the, this, the, these issues, so um, and be on the lookout uh, for that. And I want to conclude with saying that you are here, you are watching online now, you are watching the video of this event uh, uh, in the future, because you care about issues of um, uh, recovery from genocide and the, the heinous crimes that uh, ISIS perpetrated. But as you've heard from our previous speakers, from, uh, uh, um, uh, from Nadia, and I can also report from the work of USIP in Iraq that our work is not done. A lot more uh, lies ahead, and we really need to keep at these issues. If we want to address the immediate issues, and we want to turn the, uh, the never again to, into a reality, we need to keep at these issues, especially now, as the attention is shifting away to uh, tensions with Iran and other geopolitical challenges. Um, you have a part to play in your current role 
or in your future role. So please, uh, let's continue uh, to, to help the survivors um, and, uh, and, and their communities uh, through the various ways that uh, we, um, uh, we identified through this conversation and we'll identify in other conversations. So thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Abd. I really appreciate your time and uh, your helping with the, the translation as well. Please join me. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> مدفز دي ساب جم إنه أز جلكي بكيف إنه أز الفيدري بوم قالا كاري خوكر إنه أز بيجر كار بكن كهدف داعش بجيني أفقليات وندانا بن أز جلكا ممنون مش دعماء تايوان كالسر بقى هنا على إزديا أم كنادي إنشتف بخو كار ناقن بدس دخوا بس بش أعلى دراب منظمات الدراد وقا ريليف إنترناشيونال ويا يد فرنسي وان ركا أم مستشفى تشيكن كأم مزارعة تشيكن هدفي من إنه أم زانبن إنه أف دعم أكيد وجه سر أردي وأوكا بيت تشيكن وبنفس الوقت خلق كاربة في دعم كمستشفى كمزارعة أفيوان بيجرا شيء بقى كأيز دي مسيحي بسلمان إنه جارك دي كاربن بيجرا بعيش إنه وجر نصر منطقة خو. I'm happy to be here again. Thank you so much for being with us today. I just hope that we can all work together to make sure that ISIS's goal does not get accomplished, and we make sure that religious minorities can exist in that region and can survive in that region. I'm very appreciative of the support from the Taiwanese government. Uh, one word about Nadia's initiative is that uh, this support will go through our partners. We do not do uh, these projects ourselves. Uh, it will be these projects will be implemented with our partners, such as Relief International, um, uh, on uh, wash and, and livelihood projects. We are working with the French NGO Chandel Espoir uh, that will build a hospital in Sinjar, um, and uh, we hope that these projects will be. Uh, something that all communities in Sinjar can use, Muslims, Yazidis, Christians, and this will be a way to uh, um, start conversation and interaction between these communities and build social cohesion between uh, these different communities in Sinjar. Thank you again, Nadia. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you.